Can you please discuss evolution versus creation? Evolution is a created system. That's the answer. Mind-numbingly simple, isn't it? <laughs> what? I thought you were going to go into a debate. I'm telling you, evolution is a created system. <laughs> it's absurd for something to self-create. Either it's created or it doesn't exist. From nothing comes nothing. It is something must be created. If you want to embark on that, go ahead. You'll have infinite regression. You can't argue. Evolution is a created system. You've got no problems with it. Islam doesn't reject evolution. Islam does not. Allah says, so many creatures we brought from single ones. Here, mankind, we made you from a single creature. Where does Islam forbid that? Now you say, but, but wait a minute. Because based on scientific law, you have a cause and effect. And when you do deductive reasoning in science, you have to reverse the engines, which takes me back to a single cell creature. That's the only way. I said true, because science is limited to those scopes. Science has no philosophical arguments. Hence, it must be physical. And physical means I have to reverse the domino. And the reversal of domino in the reverse of time is to take a multicellular creature to take it back to a single cellular, if the assumption is that a single cellular creature is less complicated than a multicellular creature. But who's to say that? That's an argument in itself. How do you know that a single cell creature is more primitive than a multicellular? Whoever said in the scope of time that a primitive thing has to predate uh, an advanced thing? This also is flawed. Today we have, we have older fossils of humans than apes. But if I came from apes, I should have older fossils of apes. We call this missing link. Speciation. How come a species is stuck. The genetic numbering is so fixed that you cannot mate a horse with a cat. where well, they all came from the same family. So I should be able to use them. How about when I, when I do you know, the combination, recombinations of DNA? Why can't this papa ape and mama ape that gave birth to my ancestors do it again? I can do it in, in, in the lab with PCR. Why can't I do it? No, you can't do it. I says, why not? Who speciated this? Who decided there was a distinct line that is differentiated? Allah says, I create the way I do. You will find out maybe 100 years from now, maybe 10 years from now. But it will still beg the question, if you argue that it came all from a single cell, where did the single cell come from? It's too structured. Forget the single cell. What's the single cell made up of? Oh, it's made up of atoms. Oh, really? And the lowest atom that we know of, at least from the atomic principles, is hydrogen. Hydrogen is a very complicated entity. You, you pull the electron out of there, you get a hydrogen bomb. Wow. The amount of energy in an electron that circles around a proton is so intense, you split that, you get a hydrogen bomb. This is accidental? Absolute nonsense. Go into quantum physics, the particles that make the atom, and see that the particle physics talks to the other side of the universe. That the spin of one side of the atom on this side of the universe is directly correlated to the spin of the atom on the other side of the universe. This is well-known quantum physics. All came by accident? You have to be out of your mind to call yourself a scientist and to dare stipulate the idea that this is all pure coincidence. Nonsense. Even mathematicians like Roger Penrose says the probability of pure chance being the cause of all existence is zero. He's a mathematician. You're going to argue with a mathematician? I'm, I'm always baffled by this uh, abject disregard. So I say, okay, okay, but if I go back in science, I say, listen, science is limited. It's limited on a trajectory of cause and effect. Where the effect, we want to know the cause, which is the cause, which is the cause. I say, okay, let's go back. It begs the question. Even people like Stephen Hawking says, that bang, big bang, at Planck's moment, 1 times 10 to the minus 43 seconds, we don't know what caused it. If I go before that moment, this is philosophy, it's not science, because my tools break apart. At Planck's moment, my tools start. Before that, I have no tool. So I cannot talk science anymore. He says, my hat's off to the philosopher who can talk about this existence. But how do you say it? From nothing comes nothing. How could this happen? If you're going to stipulate the idea that the universe was always existent, this is a contradiction because time is finite. And therefore, it had a beginning. So there's no such thing as foreverness in time in the negative. It had a beginning. It has a, it has a vector moment in, in infinity towards the forward movement, but never backward. It has a moment of start. Well, the basic premise is from nothing comes nothing. Time was nothing. It can never exist unless something above time made it. Otherwise, it's impossible.
So I can go on and on and on. So they argue, okay, but if that is the case, Quran says we placed Adam. Isn't this a bit fantastic story? Maybe Adam came from an ape. I said, possible. If you ever see the sperm of a male, it looks like a tadpole. Very similar. When you see a baby, it looks like a creature of the sea, you know. The same baby, it looks very similar. Yeah, we share a lot. He says, you see, there you go. We share so much commonality. Isn't this that we evolve from each other? I said, that's one stipulation. How about since we all look alike, it's because there's only one maker. Mm. If I go into a room and I see 20 photographs, pictures, painted. One is a mountain, one is a dog, one is a cat, one is a monkey, one is a human. And I say, what a fantastic artist. Hey, but these are all different creatures. I cannot say, well, this ape came from that mountain. Or this mountain came, can I say, oh, this chair came? No. I said, why not? I says, because they have so many similar features. I say, yeah, the artist has got his signature everywhere. The artist has got his signature. When I go to the DNA, the artist says, that's my signature. Allah says, هَذَا خَلْقُ اللَّهِ فَأَرُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقَ الَّذِينَ مِن دُونِي بَلِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي ضَلَالِ الْمُبِينَ This is what God created. Allah says, show us, show me. Allah says, فَأَرُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقَ الَّذِينَ مِن دُونِي Show me who else has created anything. Show me, please, show me another universe. I'd like to see another universe that Allah said that's not mine. Show me. So when I speak to scientists, I say, the DNA, do you agree that we all share the same atomic particles? Are we not all stardust? Isn't that what the Nobel Prize winner got the Nobel for? Concluding that we're all made of stardust? He said, yeah. I said, there you go. One universe, one owner, one signature. Isn't that beautiful? No? So look, I can go back and forth. He said, but how did the atom join in? I said, do you agree that the initial premise had to have a higher order? Because if it doesn't, it's absurd. He says, okay, assuming God started the lightning bolt and made the single cell. I said, where does the rule say that once you start, you cannot interject in between? So for Adam to come in between is just as good as coming from the beginning. Because Allah could have started three cells, could have started 500 cells. Why not another cell in between? Why not another cell at the end? Allahu alam. As far as we're concerned, anything is possible. Is it out of scientific jurisdiction? Absolutely not. In fact, within science, we're limited. But the probability is just as good. I can say as much as that initial cell started from a higher order, so can more cells be added or subtracted. Don't we agree that some creatures become extinct? Extinction means that DNA is wiped out forever. Well, if it can be wiped out forever, then the logic of reversal comes in that something can be introduced also. Otherwise, how does it continue? So I can go on and on on these arguments. And this basic answer, this is what Islam has to say. And I love it. Quran is so elegant about it. It says, no problem. What color do you want? No? There are creatures. When I, went, you know, when I went diving in the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, in Cairns, you know, I went diving. I was about 70 feet down in the Barrier Reef. I tell you, I was looking down there as to a sea cucumber vacuuming the floor of the sea. <laughs> Literally, purple, beautiful, velvety creature, elegantly moving. Allah said, you see my creature? Look at him. <laughs> he's 60 feet on the floor. Look, he's vacuuming my floor. So I picked this creature up. It's got thousands of legs. I'm touching it and he's massaging me. So did you feel me? <laughs> I came by chance. I felt him. I said, فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهِ أَحْسَنَ الْخَالِقِينَ Blessed be you for creating such a creature. I squeezed him. I feel like a sponge. He curled up. I opened him up, left him. He kept walking. Then I went to, to the corals. I said, wow. Look at this rock. Suddenly the rock moved. It looked at me with eyes. Allah, SubhanAllah, what is this? He says, I'm not a rock. I'm a fish. <laughs> I look like a rock. Oh, but you know what? I accidentally engineered myself to look like a rock. <laughs> you know, I had so many atoms. And somehow out of the fluke, I decided to pluck me and look like a rock. You know, because I needed to survive. Otherwise the fish would eat me, you know. <laughs> I said, you have to be a nutcase to say that. If you ask this creature, how do you look? I don't know. This is what I was made. Allah says, hey, look, feel it. You see a plant. I went next to it. I did this. And the plant went in. Then two seconds, few seconds, it came out looking at me. Wow, are you a plant or are you an animal? Then he looks at me with different colors. He says, you see my colors? You'll be mesmerized. I went snorkeling at a, on an on a island. And I'm crystal clear water. So I got my garb. I'm snorkeling. 
I see crystal clear floor. I put my snorkel, I go in the water, and there's 100 fish looking at me. Transparent, I can see their, their uh, bones, and they're swimming, colorful, crystal clear, see-through. They're looking at me and said, we're all accidental. <laughs> <laughs> all I could say is, Allah. I went inside the water, I'm sitting there because my, my trainer went up to get the other people from the, from the yacht. So I'm here all alone with this tank and I'm breathing. I feel like all alone, I was in the grave. It's dark. You don't know if the shark is coming from behind you on the front, you know. It's unbelievable, it's like a universe, silent. Allah says, look at my universe. You haven't even seen this. This is your earth. Jacques Cousteau said, we have only uncovered 10% of the ocean. Our ignorance of the ocean is so much, we don't even know how the ocean works. And yet we think about the universe. Allah says, spend a million years in my ocean, you'll be stunned by what is down there. So when I'm sitting there, waiting, breathing, for a moment worried, oh, maybe a shark will come from the back. Uh, huge, uh, what do you call, um, what's the name, stingray. It was like from here to where this table is. This massive, it was like 10, 12 feet wide, and he was just gliding like this. He was just moving, and his big black eyes looked at me, you know, kept moving, and he just kept going. It was this absolute silence in the universe. Allah said, فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهِ صَنَّ الْخَالِقِ I tell you, I was trembling. Down there, 60 feet, I was trembling. So subhanAllah, what a creation. Allah says, look, all you have to do is look. You think this can come by chance? No, it doesn't come by chance. Allah. Allah.